Hello, and welcome to the Stem Cell Healing Institute podcast. In case you have any questions regarding this program, please write us at info at stemcellhealinginstitute.com. Thank you, and enjoy the podcast. Hello and welcome to the Stem Cell Healing Institute podcast. We are here with Dr. Sara Figueredo. She is the research and technical director of the Institute. And she's here with us sharing um, her knowledge and experience about the stem cells. Hello, doctor. How are you? Hello, Louise. I'm really well. Always a pleasure to be here with you. So today we have something very interesting to talk about, which is going to be stem cells for macular degeneration. Did I say that correctly? <laughs> you sure did. Yep, macular degeneration. Okay. Doctor, um, that's an eye disease, is that correct? Yes, yes, it sure is. And it's actually quite, a, you know, it's one that can be to some degree, depending on genetics and uh, we can prevent it by uh, by taking really good care. Uh, but yes, it is an eye disease uh, where, you know, we it, it can be affected by our diet, our lifestyle, of course, genes, um, wearing sunglasses, uh, you know, wearing our, our sun protective lenses in the sun. Uh, there are so many uh, precautionary measures that we can take to prevent macular degeneration. But I guess what we need to do is talk about what we can do once we have macular degeneration. And I what suppose. is the macular degeneration? So maybe some people don't uh, know how to identify that. Mm -hmm. And so basically it's a degeneration uh, or a damage over time of the macula in the retina. That's correct. And so uh, vision is impaired, night vision is impaired. To, uh, you know, slowly it becomes worse at night to be able to drive um, any kind of vision, uh, looking, you know, looking at screens and um, looking at your phone or, or using a computer. It all becomes uh, uh, very, very difficult to do and it can lead to, you know, blindness. And um, and so and, and as I mentioned that, uh, you know, certain um diets that lack fruits and vegetables and colorful foods, um, the lack of the ability to be able to digest and assimilate these foods. Also, a lot of people, you know, we tend to forget that, hey, I'm eating these foods and, and you know, I shouldn't be having uh, these problems. But the thing is, is we need to also look at whether or not your body is digesting them. Um, if you have the appropriate enzymes and stomach acids and uh, and, and if you do, uh, whether or not um, you're absorbing them correctly. So how well is your digestive tract working and absorbing and uh, the integrity of the intestinal cells in order to, to absorb uh, digested materials and nutrients? Uh, that is, uh, th those are really important uh, questions. And, um, and so, yes, yeah, so macular degeneration can be caused by uh, lifestyle uh, again, the the UVA and UVB rays uh, and genetics and uh, and so on. Um, yes, so we we tend to see macular degeneration in the aging and um, and as as people age and so older, uh, you know, later in life, uh, and it, and it's unfortunate because uh, it really diminishes the quality of life as we as we age and uh, having to deal with vision problems. It's uh, it can be quite challenging. Okay, and how does the stem cells can actually work uh, for people suffering this disease? Mm -hmm. Yes, so, you know, it's really important to point out that when we have conditions that are so local, um, we, as much as we can, we try to place the stem cells locally. Uh, in the case of joints, because the limited uh, blood supply of the joints, we will inject right into the joint. Um, in this case, because um, we can, we'll inject close to the stem cells, uh, sorry, we'll inject close to the eyes, 
We don't inject right into the eyes or right into the retina uh, due to the risk of damage. But what we do is we do a retrobulbar injection, which is um, gets the stem cells right next to the eye without doing any kind of damage to the eye itself. And, um, and, um, and so we, we, what, this is called, again, a retrobulbar injection. And then, uh, and then we will also reinforce that with an intravenous infusion of the stem cells. So we get the stem cells into the blood to get to the get the stem cells everywhere the blood flows, and also locally behind the eye, uh, right next to the retina, um, in order to get the stem cells uh, to the eye that way. So we we try to leave no stones unturned. So, doctor, how do you know if you have enough stem cells for any treatment that you do? Good, good question, Louise. So. With our treatments, when we, uh, many of our treatments we will do with either bone marrow, um, aspiration, or the mesenchymal stem cells. All of them are, of course, mesenchymal stem cells, either from bone marrow, adipose tissue derived, uh, umbilical cord derived, or endometrial derived. And we will decide uh, which one for what condition or perhaps a combination. Um, for uh, we like to use bone marrow in many cases because it is autologous. It's the patient's own stem cells. And we have a proprietary way of growing them and expanding them, which is growing in numbers, multiplying them within the body, within the patient's own body, uh, incubating within the body, growing within the body. Um, and it just makes it so, so safe and effective. And we can get hundreds of millions of stem cells that way. And of course, we count them um, in the lab to ensure that we have the correct numbers, which are so, so, so important uh, in the stem cell treatment is that you use enough stem cells. And also the fact that, that the stem cells are alive, live, alive and kicking. Uh, if we don't have viable stem cells, but we have our numbers, uh, we have the numbers, it's, it's no good to us. So we have to ensure those two things. Um, and... Uh, And, and then we will, if we feel the need, we may combine them with endometrial or umbilical cord uh, cells. From another donor? Yes, that's okay. right. The umbilical cord and uh, endometrial are, are considered allogenic mesenchymal stem cells. That means that they're coming from someone other than the patient's body. Uh, in the case of the bone marrow, uh, it's coming from within the patient's body, correct? So I, I always like to do a follow-up questions when I ask you about the type of stem cells because uh, it's important for people to know what type of stem cells we don't use. Right. <laughs> That is a very, very yeah. good point. So we do not use any kind of embryonic stem cells. We don't use any kind of fetal stem cells um, for various different reasons. First of all, it's extremely Uh, we don't know the safety of uh, embryonic and fetal uh, cells because they're so, such primitive young cells. They can grow um, uh, indefinitely and cause tumors or growths, perhaps cancers. And so we will not use any kind of embryonic or, um, or fetal cell, anything that can be, uh, cause any kind of risk to our patient. Um, our, our, as, as a physician, Our oath, our Hippocratic oath is first do no harm. And so if we don't know the efficacy or the safety of something, we will just not do it. Um, so that's number one. And we can get the results and, and amazing, amazing outcomes with, um, you know, safer, uh, very effective methods. You mentioned in the previous podcast that these treatments are not allowed in the U.S. and Canada. Why are we doing those treatments in Guatemala? Oh, yes. Um, so, again, that is a very good question. The reason why uh, these treatments are not available in North America is because they're considered Ill illegal. Anytime we combine a, a stem cell Uh, with uh, a stem cell, for instance, with, from a patient's own body. Number one, it has to be from a patient's own body in the U.S., but it cannot be combined with anything, even the patient's own blood or, or uh, platelets 
or um, growth factors, it cannot be combined with anything. It's considered an unapproved drug. And un it's unfortunate because that can make the treatment so much more effective. So that is considered illegal, number one. Number two, um, the, uh, the, the everything has to be done in one day. So, it, you know, we can't, if we needed to incubate, if we needed to do anything over a, a, a treatment session, it cannot be done uh, to, to help things uh, become more effective. And, um, and, uh, and so, and also we, in the U S we cannot combine uh, or we cannot use any stem cell other than the patient's own stem cells. So any sort of allogenic umbilical cord endometrial, none of that is allowed uh, legally allowed to be, to be used for a stem cell treatment. Um, so these things can make the treatment very, very uh, less effective. Um, the numbers uh, may not be there. Um, also, a lot of the adjunctive treatments that we do here, uh, they're not allowed. For instance, growth hormone, uh, age-appropriate growth hormone therapy, that is not allowed in, uh, in the U.S. or Canada either. And so, uh, so that is the reason that we're here uh, doing these very safe and very effective treatments in Guatemala. So, uh, doctor, uh, for macular degeneration, is like in uh, any other treatments, like you will see the results in three months? Oh, yes, yes. So the timeline, like, I, like I've always mentioned before, is the timeline we like to give our patients is three months. Uh, that just seems to be sort of the, the magic number is, is three months where, it, it, where we can possibly see results um, before that. But three months is the general general rule of thumb, and um, and Louise, you know what kind of results can be can we expect from treatment for macular degeneration? You know we have seen patients improve night vision; um, they can see uh, shadows and they can see silhouettes that they could never see before. Um, you know, in, that was almost immediately with a with a patient I remember uh, that just comes to mind. Um, And so, yes, night vision improves. We've seen patients go from not being able to drive at night to, to driving at night, using their computers, being able to, to see better with their, with their glasses, watch television, um, decrease the font um, on their computers. Uh, so some pretty, pretty phenomenal results. Awesome. Doctor, um, most of your patients come from out of town, from out of the country? Yes, yes, Louise, because, because of the very fact that these treatments are not available in, in Canada, in the, in the U.S. And so, uh, so, yes, most of our patients come from uh, abroad. Okay, so if you are coming from outside of Guatemala, uh, we want you to know that we can arrange everything from accommodations to one-day trips, or if you want to visit something in particular, we can arrange that. Also, we will provide a, a chauffeur that can drive you around from the appointments to your place where you're going to stay at. And if you want to come with your family, please let us know so we can also arrange some entertainment for them <laughs> while you're doing or getting the treatment. Dr. Thank you very much for your time. I will see you next week. Thank you. Thank you so much, Louise. It's always a pleasure. You take care. Okay. By the end of the podcast, you will find all the information how to contact Dr. Figueredo. In case you have any questions, please send us an email. Thank you. If you want to contact us at the Stem Cell Healing Institute or Dr. Sarah Figueredo, you may do it by calling us. In North America, you may dial plus one two zero nine six nine zero seven eight three six. Also, if you want to write us by WhatsApp, you may add plus five zero two four two two zero seven two nine seven. Please send us an email at info at stemcellhealinginstitute.com. And don't forget to visit our website, stemcellhealinginstitute.com. Also, if you like to recommend our treatments, you may find us on Facebook at Stem Cell Healing Institute. Please follow us on Instagram 
at the stem cell hi if you want to recommend this podcast please refer to anchor.fm slash stem cell healing also you may find us with that very same name on spotify if you want to watch our videos please go to dr sarah figueredo that is on youtube thank you